I am recording. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I am also recording, sir. Uh, was, Vasu, Vasu, okay. Uh, today we will discuss uh, about administrative roles. So that means in real time we have different environments like development, production, pre-production, uh, disaster recovery and testing UAT environments. So for these environments, so we can create users. So whoever using that environment, so accordingly we can create the users we can assign the permissions to that users. Suppose take development environment. So developers cannot do the restart activities. So restart activities and stopping starting activities is done by administrators. So developers cannot do that. Okay. For giving the <coughs> developers roles, roles is different. So generally in development mode environment, the developers will do the deployments. Okay. So, uh, so, and coming to UAT, UAT and test environment, they will test the application. So at that time, we have to create the users and we have to assign the permissions for only monitoring. Okay. So on production users, we can give administrator because production, uh, production environment is complete administration, we have to give. Okay. Even in production also, we can give uh, the different roles for the users based on category uh, uh, I mean uh, whoever in the I mean uh, L3, L2 support so they can do the uh, all administrative tasks so that people can have administrative role so remaining people uh, some people have monitoring role some people have deployer role so like that we can assign the roles to the users and we can manage the WebSphere application server. So that roles we are going to discuss now. Okay. Um, now let me share my screen. So for that, uh, here we have a tab called Users and Groups. Okay. So first check what are the uh, what are the roles available under this administrative. Okay, uh, go to this administrative user roles. Uh, let me log in. So go to users and groups and administrative user roles. Here, uh, one moment, let me delay these two. Administrative user roles. Uh, here we have only one user that is WAS admin. Okay, so primary administrative username. That means so he is the administrator he can do whatever he wants okay so here uh, to checking the uh, roles all roles what are the roles available under this administrative roles okay so click on add here here you can find all the roles okay uh, uh, this is the list of roles and first one is admin security manager that means the administrator can do the only security operations okay and if you give administrator role for user uh, that uh, the, the user becomes administrator okay and if you give auditor uh, he, he will become the auditor okay and configurator if you give configurator role to the users uh, he can do the only configuration changes he cannot do the other activities like uh, re, uh, stop starting the services or um, uh, deploying the applications he cannot do so only configurations changes he can do configuration changes means uh, creating the servers deleting the servers uh, creating JDBC also like that some activities what are the configuration changes he can do the all configuration changes here and deployer role means he can do only deployments Okay, so the user having deployer role means the users 
can do only the deployments. You cannot do anything other than deployment. Okay, and monitor. <coughs> monitor role means uh, he can monitor the configurations. He can read the configurations. He cannot do anything. Only just reading the configurations and checking the sanity. That's it. Okay, and coming to operator. Operator can do the uh, start and stop activities of the services and applications. Okay, so these are all the roles available under administrative user roles. Okay, and coming to administrative group roles, here also same. Uh, here also we can see the uh, same uh, privileges. Okay, so go to the uh, click on add here you can see the same okay so here user means uh, we can create uh, a single user and we can assign the roles to that user so group means uh, we can create the group and we can add multiple users to that group okay suppose if you create one group if you add if you choose one uh, administrative task for that group so whatever the group members the same automatically the group members will get the same permissions suppose I have created one group and assign monitor uh, permissions to that group so whoever adding into that group by default that users will get monitoring roles okay so for that uh, we have to uh, we have to do from here okay so now I'm going to create one user for creating the user click on manage users okay already I have one user that is WS admin he is the administrator so I'm going to create a new user dev1 and the first name is dev1 and one here specify password and create so your user is created successfully okay I'm going to create another user dev2 okay Create. Two users are created. I'm going to create third one. Three. Two, three. Okay. So I have created three users. So I can see the three users. Now we have to assign the permissions, the roles to these users. Okay. So for assigning the permissions, go to the administrative user roles. Because this is for users. Okay. Here click on add. Okay. Now select one role here. So I am going to select configurator role okay and search click on search here it will display the available users so I am going to give uh, configurator role for dev1 okay so select the dev1 here and click on arrow button it will move to here map it to this role okay these are all the available users and these are all the mapped users okay and click on ok save the configurations so I have assigned configurator role to dev1 so now try to log in with dev1 okay so log out from this console dev1 user login 
okay so he he has only configuration role so now try to go to the servers and click on server type and click on websphere application servers so here uh, i cannot see start stop server buttons so only minimum buttons available so only new and delete because configuration changes means uh, creating the servers and deleting the servers okay that's why only two tabs i can see here so he the this user the, the dev one user cannot start and stop the servers from the console because he is not the operator he is the configurator so that's why we can he can do only configuration changes from the console okay and come down go to the applications uh go to xpr enterprise applications okay so here he cannot stop and start the application but he can deploy the application and deploy update remove file he can do so this is configuration change okay so installing and uninstalling is configuration change so he can do the configuration changes here he cannot do the operations like restarting stop stopping applications okay and go and check system administration we are also same go to the nodes okay so in this node also he can add and remove the nodes but he cannot synchronize the node so if you log in with administrator here you can see synchronization tab and resynchronization tab and uh, restart the node tab so those three tabs are not available because he is not the operator he is only configurator okay Hi, and log in with yeah yes tell me uh, yeah suppose if i want to pick the user from domain where to configure that ldap LDAP by default uh, we have LDAP uh, in this web sphere otherwise we can use a third party LDAP uh, IBM Tivoli directory server so generally we use that uh, IBM Tivoli directory server from that server we can pick the user details only that is the way from Tivoli server or is there any other way yes only that way there is no other way okay okay no. okay so i am going to assign uh, i'm uh, go to the administrative roles and add here i'm going to deployer so assigning the deployer role to dev2 okay and monit operator role to dev3 and click on okay save the configuration okay do do to do three having same permissions let's monitor or deployer apply save the configuration now do to having deployer permission and <coughs> do three operator login with dev dev3 so operator he is the operator then come to uh, application servers check whether he is having operator uh, roles or not see here uh, the this user can restart the services stop and start restart immediate stop terminate so here there is no button new to creating the server new creating the new server so he is the because he is the operator he can do the restarts and go to the applications here also he can do only start and stop the applications but he cannot deploy the applications 
he cannot deploy and deploy export nothing so he cannot do anything only restarts he can do okay so like this we can create number of users as per our requirement we can assign the roles to the users as per the I mean role okay in the team uh, according to the environment or according to your team you can assign the roles to them so they will work with that roles okay and go to the groups here uh, I'm creating a group manage group click on manage group and create one group here I am creating monitoring group so in monitoring group only monitor users will be there okay so monitoring group and go to the uh, I am going to create another user dev4 So this password is a new password you create. You are creating for the user, right? Yes. You yes. access the server. Oh. Mm, yes, for logging into the console. I'm giving WAS admin. You can give whatever you want. Okay. So now uh, we go to the group and create one group here. Uh, sorry, uh, already we have uh, uh, a group. I think. Uh, manage groups uh, create a group here monitoring a group and create already monitoring group we have created now add the users into this group okay before going to add uh, assign some role to this group so for assigning the roles uh, go to this group and here uh, sorry uh, go to this administrative group roles and here add click on add and then uh, I'm going to assign more this is monitoring group right so I'm going to assign monitoring role and click on search so it will display the monitoring group here so whatever the groups we have created all the groups it will display select the monitoring group here and move to here map this role and click on ok so the entire group having monitoring role so now assign the users to this group once we assign the users in this group the users will get monitoring role by default ok now uh, go to the manage groups here and go to this monitoring group and here there is a tab members click on members here add the users okay click on add and search here you can see all available users okay so you can assign any of the user into this group okay I'm going to add dev4 and dev5 these two users for the monitoring group ok so dev4 and dev5 is in monitoring group now ok so now login with dev4 and dev5 VAS admin Go to the servers, server types. Uh, 
here I cannot see any tab. There is no tabs for start or restart and create a new nothing. So because the user is monitor, he can do only monitor whether the servers are running or not, so whether the application is running or not. So he cannot do anything. If you found any error, if you found any issues, uh, he will intimate to the operator team. Okay, uh, in the same team, in the same team itself, uh, they, uh, he will inform the server has problem. We are not able to see so the server is running or not. So, the server is not running. So he will inform to the next operators team. They will take care of it. They will troubleshoot. Okay. And here, uh, this is the applications. Here, uh, this uh, this user cannot do anything. So he can do only monitor. So as of now, the applications are not available. He can monitor only this, whether the application is running or not. Suppose if the application is not running, he will inform to the next team like operator or configurator whatever administrator so they will do the operations okay so like this we can assign we can create the users and groups and assign them permissions to the users and groups okay is it clear Get, is it clear? Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, then coming to the next stop topic, logs, log files. Okay. Actually, log file is very important because if anyone reports any issue first we have to look into the log files only so sometimes we are doing the operations from the console we are getting errors right so in that in that case we have to look into the logs only because log file is a text file uh, log file is nothing but it is a simple text file which records each and every activity of the servers okay it records each and every second to second operations second to second activities it will record in the log files only so uh, if anyone <coughs> report any issue first we will go and verify the logs the logs uh, will guide you the log will uh, show you the uh, cause of that issues okay accordingly we will analyze the log files and we will take the action to resolve the issues okay so um, we have we have same set of log files for all types of servers we have different types of servers in in the environment dmgr server application servers node agent admin agent and job manager so take any server the servers having the same set of log files okay for identifying the for recording the information okay. so we can maintain these log files in two ways the first one is maintain uh, we have two policies for maintaining the log files first policy is memory based policy second one is time based policy okay so memory based means it's based on Name file size of file. Okay, it based on size of file. Once the file reaches specified memory, the server. Or renames the file with the current date and creates a new file create a new file 
with the same name. Okay, so in memory based, uh, it depends on size, uh, whatever the size we have given. So it takes the size once the the size is filled. Suppose if I give uh, 2 MB, okay, once the file reaches 2 MB, then the server itself renames that file with the current date. That means it is taking a backup. Okay, it is taking a backup of that file and it creates a new file with the same name. And time based means it's uh, it depends on time. Once the file reaches time limit, the server or renames that file with the current date and creates a new file with the same name. Okay, so memory based means we have to specify the file size time based means we have to specify the time uh, time means 1 hour, 2 hours, 24 hours, 12 hours like that so once the time is up the file uh, once the time is up which we have specified then uh, the server itself renames the file and it will create the new file with the same name so like this we will rotate the log files okay because why we are uh, rotating this log file means um, the file if the file size is increased because uh, it is recording each and every activity that means each and every second the file will be updated some data will be append to that file so in that case if you are not rotating the file the file size will be huge so uh, the server will not read the file uh, continuously okay so why while reading that log files the server will take more time so the performance will be low okay so that's why we are using rotation policies here so that the server can read the log file very easy if it is very uh, if it is less memory or less time then the performance will be high otherwise it will take a lot of space in the disk uh, that is one disadvantage and second disadvantage is server performance will be down uh, about reading the files okay now we will see what are the log files available under WebSphere go to the console here uh, go to the troubleshooting here is logs and trace click on this logs and trace uh, here uh, I can see the servers what are the servers available in my environment DMGR server member 1 node agent every every server we can see here so as of now DMGR is running we will go and verify the DMGR server logs the set of logs is for, same for all the servers okay so these are all the different types of logs okay so in this uh, in these logs 99% uh, we use uh, we will see the JVM logs only because WebSphere application server is JVM process we will go and verify only JVM logs 99% okay so go to this JVM logs click on this JVM logs here we can see the log file. The first one is system.log, system.out.log. Okay, system.out.log. So this is the main file. This is the unique file and main file. It will record all the server activities. Okay, and if you come down, here is the rotation policy. 
and by default it is five by size okay so by default it is unable and the file size is 1 MB once the file reaches 1 MB it renames the file by the server okay so like that it will create the five files so once the five files reaches it will archive it will take a backup of uh, the five files okay that that means each and every time we can see only five files so if you have another more than five files it will move to another directory so that policy we have to we have to create okay so uh, using some uh, shell scripting we have to uh, archive the log files okay and uh, behind here uh, this is the time based here we have to mention hours start time and repeat time okay and coming down here another log file system error dot log okay so it contains <coughs> it contains the information about JVM okay internal JVM issues this is for each and every activity so whatever the activity positive or negative it will record so in this but in this system error only errors only error finds we can see only error data the internal JVM process information will be saved in this log file so these two are these two are the main log files so whenever anyone reported any issue we have to look into serve system out dot log first and second one system error dot log so these two log files we have to verify and we have to conclude the issue okay and this also having file size maximum size and minimum size, maximum size and time based okay and the maximum number of historical files is 5 okay the number range is 1 to 200 so here we can modify also so I am giving 5 MB and here 50 we can modify that is that is our wish so we can modify whatever we want okay laboratory in policy is customized we can do that okay go to the JVM logs so now verify the changes here so it is updated 550 so accordingly we will rotate that is our job so based on the request load and uh, based on the request and load we have to rotate the log files so that that uh, that the, that is the job of administrator we have to identify we have to analyze okay so accordingly we will put the um, file sizes here file size I mean rotation policies and if you go to runtime here you can see the path where exactly the system dot out located so the file is the file path is opt ibm webspear app server profiles dmg profile logs dmg server system dot out log okay if you want to view the log click on view this is the log file the current log file okay and also same way we can see the system out dot log also go to the runtime system error dot log also we can see the same thing we can uh, see from here go to opt ibm web sphere app server DMGR DMGR profile logs DMGR server here you can see the log files this is the path the same path okay system out dot log system error dot log okay and one more log we have uh, DMGR PID it will store the process ID of DMGR 
okay so these two are the important so remaining more not required so uh, these log files are for different purposes okay and this is for uh, the and uh, the particular server log that means uh, dmgr server log okay and native server native error native out we will discuss uh, next in the next uh, log file okay so this is the path of dmgr server log in the same way we can see uh, for app server also go to the app server profile Here all the servers are available and go to any of the server, server 2 is there and here you can see the same set of logs, same set of logs, there is no difference. System out dot, system, uh, system out dot log is there, PID is there, system error not available because the server is in uh, shutdown state, once we start the server it will show the system error also because system error is especially for JVM activities internal JVM activities so it is there right it is there system error dot log is there this is old one no next one this one this is yesterday's one it will oh, no. uh, the current log is not available oh okay if it is available okay. it goes to the bottom of the list? Yeah, yeah oh. yes. So see here it is showing November 10, 9 o'clock, system out. But it is showing November 10, 6 o'clock. This is not updated one. Okay, okay. Okay, it will display below. For what are the updated file? It will display the last. Okay. Okay. So this is about JVM log. Okay. And coming to another log. Uh, JVM log is 99% JVM log only we use. Other log files we never use, but we will discuss that also. Uh, diagnostic trace. Diagnostic trace means tracing the uh, uh, issues. Like uh, suppose uh, if the if any person have uh, reported any issue, so that issue is not uh, we are, we are not able to find out in the log files. At that time, we can put the server in debug mode. Okay, we can say, we can put the server in trace mode, and we can reproduce the issue. Reproduce the issue means uh, suppose he is trying to log in some application. So we have to put uh, uh, whenever he is trying to log in some application, he is getting error. So he is not able to log in, or uh, the application is slow. Some modules are not displaying. So these are all the issues we used to face. So uh, reproducing the issue means uh, once we put uh, the server in the trace mode, then we can reproduce the issue. Reproduce the issue means again trying to access the application, trying to log in. So at that time, the logs will be, the specified logs will be uh, saved in trace log. Okay. So in this part, we cannot see trace log. Because we are not doing any trace as of now, that's why trace trace dot uh, log is not available in the list. So for the, for doing the trace and uh, for reproducing the issue, go to this diagnostic log. It is arrow mark is okay. Here we can see trace dot log. Okay, so in this trace dot log, it will record the particular, I mean, uh, particular debug information of the server. These things, uh, this uh, de debug and trace, we will do 
if the issue is not able to find out from the log files okay so we can put in the debug mode and we can find out the issue okay for this also uh, there is limits and minimum buffer size is 8 maximum file size is 20 MB and historical files is 5 and the same uh, path is same under dmgr trace.log okay so as of now the, we are not doing any debug that's why it is not visible in this path okay and coming to runtime here uh, here also same uh, Rambo, this is the uh, where, path. where do you specify that we are in the debug mode so debug mode means uh, I will show you. I will show you the debug okay. mode. So, okay. Okay. So con go to this, this configuration uh, and runtime. Both are uh, both are same. And uh, here is the complete path of this log file. Okay. And uh, there is the additional properties here. Go to this change log details okay and here here is the option enable log and trace collection okay here we have to enable the debug or trace okay so apply this one and reproduce the issue then it will create the log file and a dmgr server with the specific error so what are the activities we did after trace so only that log file that information will be saved in, <coughs> in trace.log okay so the option is diagnostic trace log change log details level that is the option okay and uh, the third one is process log go to this process log here you can see native std and native std error so these two log files we use uh, for troubleshooting and this log file saves the information like garbage collector okay server related internal server related errors will be saved in these log files so using these log files we can find out like uh, what is the garbage collector and out of memory exceptions for uh, and server hang 500 exceptions so those errors we can see from this log okay this is also uh, I mean internal server activities only okay these log files stores internal server error logs so this is for uh, only troubleshooting purpose here there is no rotation policy for these logs because <coughs> this these log files never rotate until unless the issue is occurs so because uh, we are not get uh, garbage collector issues daily out of memory exceptions daily so that's why we are not able to rotate the policies ro log rotation policies for these two logs okay the path is same native std and native error you can see the log files from here same path okay and go to the runtime is the path now we have seen okay and uh, this, uh, these three are the important regularly we use and uh, remaining three we don't use uh, in real time uh, most of the time we use these three only okay so and these three uh, apart from these two JVM logs is very important 99% we will go and look into the JVM logs only okay so here uh, the fourth option is IBM service log go to this IBM service log mouse not working so this is uh, putting debug mode fourth one is uh, just like okay. so in this we have service log activity log 
so this is under uh, log root so maximum size is uh, actually uh, i never use this uh, ibm service log uh, in my career uh, but activity activity log also will be created under the same path uh, i'm not sure uh, what is the advantage of this okay and the fourth one is log levels nothing but debug we can put the debug mode or trace mode and the final one is in csa this also i never used okay so this is complete information about the log files and the web sphere so is it clear yes yes sir okay fine so uh, i'm stopping here uh, we will come with the new topic tomorrow uh rambabagar tomorrow i will not be in town this weekend uh, can we have the class on monday uh, okay sure no problem we will resume the class on monday fine uh, thank you I'm, uh, can you able to show me like uh, you are saying like a tool right uh, from ldap uh, we uh, yeah i will show you uh, currently i don't have the software uh, i will get it done and i will show you definitely okay yeah, just i want to see like uh, which options and all those things mm okay okay but the tivoli directory server maintained by some other team ldap team is available mm -hmm. uh, in every company because we we cannot do the administration for that tivoli uh, okay. ldap team is different but i will show you uh, the options over there okay okay sure okay okay thanks bye